Hi there, my name is Miss Townsend and I love math. Welcome to Math with Townsend. This video is for grade 10 students who are working on the year end summative and it's question number eight from the summative package. The question says a local tour company runs adventure tours in the mountains. They usually charge $30 per person and generated $2,040 in revenue each week. Market research indicates that for every $2 decrease in price, they will sell four more tours. So our goal is to find the following. What is the ticket price that maximizes revenue? What is the revenue? And how many tours would they run? So when you read this question, hopefully the word that really jumps out to you, first of all, is the word maximizes. So when you look at the word maximizes as a grade 10 student, you should really pretty quickly realize that when we're talking about maximizing or minimizing or optimizing, what we're doing is we're looking for the vertex of a quadratic relation. So in this case, we're going to expect some sort of quadratic equation to exist. And then we're, to maximize it, we're going to try to find the maximum value, which would be the vertex. So when I read this question, I'm not given any sort of equation, which means I have to build my own equation. So how am I going to build an equation? Well, the thing that I'm maximizing is revenue. And that means I need an equation for revenue. So how do we find revenue? Well, we have um, a company selling tickets to take a tour. So they sell $30 tickets and people buy them and that generates their revenue. So here's how we're going to find revenue. Revenue is the price per person times the number of people. So a really simple example, if I had a lemonade stand and I sold lemonade for a dollar, and 100 people bought it, my revenue would be 100 bucks. Now, remember, that's not profit. That's just revenue. That's the amount that you actually collect. And later on, you'll worry about profit, but not in this question. So we need to figure out an equation that relates revenue, price per person, and number of people. Um, so in the original situation, before we worry about any price increases or decreases, we know that we're charging $30 per person. And we know that the revenue is 2,040. What we don't know originally is the number of people. So let's do that calculation because we're going to need it. So if it's $30 per person, and in total we make $2,040, I'm going to divide both sides by 30. And that tells me that 68 people are buying tickets when it's $30 per ticket. So right now, before we do any price changes, we have 68 people a week buying $30 tickets, and together that revenue that gives us a revenue of 2,040. So that's the original situation. But now, where our math is going to come in is from the fact that we have potentially a price change to make. For every $2 decrease in price, they will sell four more tickets. So let's think about what that really means. So I'm going to go to the next page here. So it's important to understand really what we're saying here. And, and so let's think this through. And this is always good problem solving advice. Um, so let's talk about the various prices we could charge and the number of people that would therefore buy tickets. So we know originally that if we charge $30, we're going to get 68 people to buy tickets. We're told that if I decrease the price by $2, so if I decrease the price by $2, then we're going to have a $28 price level. And if that happens, four more people are going to buy tickets. So four more people would be 72. So I could multiply 28 times 72 to get a new revenue and compare it to the old revenue. And I could keep subtracting $2 in the ticket price. Oops. I could keep subtracting this $2 ticket price and adding $4 to the number of people and calculating a new revenue and so on. Um, now, obviously, eventually, there's a limit. I can't keep dropping the price by $2 forever because eventually I'll get to $0. And then it doesn't matter what's over here. It doesn't matter how many people buy tickets because you're not going to make any revenue if you're not charging any money. So we know for sure that there's a, a limit to how many times I can drop that price. Now, the other thing we have to keep in mind of is that if there's a $2 decrease in price, we have to assume mathematically that we could also increase the price by $2. And that would mean losing four people. So if I were to increase the price 
I would actually have fewer people buy tickets and then again I could multiply and find the new revenue and compare it to the original. So our goal is to figure out how many times do we want to do this price change of two dollars so that whatever our revenue is, price times number of people, is a maximum. Now obviously what we don't want you to do is to make a table of values like this and keep multiplying and calculating revenue and just looking like that. We want to see a more mathematical answer, especially if the answer is, is a decimal value. You're not going to find that through a guessing check. So here's what we have to do. <clears throat> Again, let me go back here for a second. We want to know how many times should I do this $2 price decrease in order to maximize my revenue. Well, I don't know, and that's why we have variables. So we're going to let x be the number of $2 price decreases. Uh -oh. Hold on. Okay, so x is going to be the number of $2 price decreases. So let's calculate our new price. So the new price is going to be the $30 original price, but every time we do x, we need to lose $2 from our price. So every x is going to take $2 off the price. So x gives us a new price of 30 minus 2x. So if we go back to the table, if x was 1, we're at 28. If x is 2, we're at 26, and so on. Um, we also need to look at new number of people, because that also changes every time we change x. So we started with 68 people, but then every time we did this, so every time we did X, this happened. So every X meant four more people were buying tour tickets. So this is the number of people we have now. And that gives us our equation for revenue, because remember revenue is price per person times number of people. So the price per person is going to be 30 minus 2X, and the number of people will therefore be 68 plus 4x. And what I've done is I've created an equation that is quadratic. If I were to multiply this out, so if I were to multiply this out and do FOIL, you'd see that eventually I would have negative 2x times 4x, and that would give me negative 8x squared, and so clearly it's a quadratic. And so because it's a quadratic, I know that to find the maximum means to find the vertex. Okay, so let's see if I can copy and paste this. Let me take my equation. Uh oh, not that. Uh, okay, so let's take our equation, <coughs> revenue, and it was $30 minus 2x and 68 people plus 4x. And think of this as just an equation if you want. Think of there being a y here instead of an r. And we want to find the maximum. We want to find the vertex. So how do we find a vertex? So there's a couple different ways. You could do FOIL, collect like terms, and complete the square. Um, but I'm going to find the vertex by finding the x and y, the x intercepts. So I'm, let me just visualize here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to find the x intercepts, or the roots, or the zeros. Um, and I'm, so let's imagine for a minute that they're here and here. Um, so picturing the parabola sort of like this. Again, I don't really know what it looks like, but I know it, it, it's down. Um, if I can find x1 and x2, the two x-intercepts, I can find their midpoint. So their midpoint, right about here, is important because the axis of symmetry goes through the midpoint. And the axis of symmetry also goes through the vertex. So if I can find the roots, use them to find the axis of symmetry, and use the axis of symmetry to find the vertex. So how do I find the roots? Well, we let r equal 0, because the roots would be right here along this line, and that's the line where r is 0. So 0 would be 30 minus 2x, and 68 plus 4x. So you'll notice what I'm doing is I'm treating this exactly as it is, which is a factored quadratic. So here I have the first factor. And if this has a value of 0, I don't care what's over here, 0 times anything is 0. So one answer would be from if the first bracket 
was equal to zero. Oops, I put an extra x in there. Let me get rid of that. Here we go. So one root can be found by making the first bracket equal to zero. The other root comes from this. If this bracket was equal to zero, it doesn't matter what's in this bracket because zero times anything is still zero. So my other root comes from the fact that the other bracket, the other factor could also be zero. So that's how I find my two roots is by taking my factored expression and solving for zero for each of the factors. So here I have a simple linear equation, 2x equals 30, x equals 15. And over here, negative uh, 4x equals 68. So x equals negative, uh oh, calculator, 17. So there's my two roots. So if I look back at this diagram, now I know that this, uh, let me use a fancier looking pen, this is at negative 17, and this is at 15. <laughs> Weird pen. Um, so now if I can find their midpoint, their midpoint will tell me where the axis of symmetry is. So let's go ahead and find the midpoint. So the midpoint of two numbers is like the average of them. So I'm going to add them together, divide by 2. So the midpoint is negative 2. The midpoint is negative 1. And that means that the axis of symmetry has the equation x equals negative 1, and therefore the vertex is at negative 1 comma something. So again, just to see what happens, this was the point where x is negative 17. This was the point where x was 15. Exactly halfway between them is where x is negative 1. And the axis of symmetry, because of the symmetry in a parabola, the axis of symmetry passes through um, x equals negative 1, and therefore the vertex will have an x-coordinate of negative 1. Now all I have to do is find the y-coordinate. So let's go back to the equation we made. Revenue equals 30 minus 2x and 68 plus 4x. So now I know that if x is negative 1, I have a vertex. So I'm going to let x be negative 1 in this equation. So 30 times negative 2x and 68 plus 4x. And again, x is now the number negative 1. So just do that with a bit of math. This is 30 plus 2. And this is 68 minus 4. So if I multiply those together, I get what should be the maximum revenue, which is 2,048. Um, so I'm just going to quickly check that originally my revenue was 2,040. So we got a better revenue. And it should be, it is, if my math is right, the maximum revenue. So let's answer all the questions we need to um, on the next page. Oops. Um, so let me grab this so we have a cleaner, nice clean piece of paper, copy, paste. Okay, so we just discovered that there is a vertex at negative 1, 2048. And this was x, and this was the revenue. So it says, what is the ticket price that maximizes revenue? Well, the ticket price is not negative 1. The ticket price was 30 minus 2x. So the ticket price is, and again, I'll just recalculate here. The ticket price is $32. So a $32 ticket price will maximize the company's revenue. What is the revenue? Boom, it's right there. The maximum revenue is $2,048. And how many tours will they run? Well, they will run 68 plus 4x tours. And again, if I calculate that using our x value of negative 1, we know that they will run 64 tours. Okay? So don't forget when you answer questions for your teacher, be neater than me, um, and perhaps answer with sentences. But hopefully that explains the math of this question.